Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at the Dagger L from Gundam Seed Destiny. So right off the bat, here is absolutely everything that comes inside of this box. So it is a simple kit, but not as simple as you would think for what is essentially a sort of army builder kit. So what we do get in here is the usual Gundam loadout of sword, board and rifle. And as the dagger is not a Gundam, that sword is the ESO-4B beam saber, the board is the shield, and that rifle is the M703K beam carbine. And I will mention right here, this is not what this kit looks like out of the box, so let's talk about that for a second. So right out of the box, this is what this kit looks like. It is very basic, definitely. This is heavily based on the high-grade strike, as you would expect. So that means it isn't something like the fine build system we would have seen with the Leo or the Wyndham. This is based on an older kit being the strike, which in turn is based on the build strike Gundam. As you can see in this runner right here, so that dates all the way back to 2013. It is a great kit, but it is a little bit plain to look at. So what I did with this kit is, first off, I panel lined it. I actually tried a brand new type of panel liner. When I pulled it out of the Gundam marker box, I thought it was a poor style Gundam marker. The type you just touch and it'll fill the lines for you, but it's not. It's just a normal panel liner with a more, I guess, almost brush type or felt tip large end. Not like the fine liners. So I did find this unusual at first to use, I didn't necessarily like it, but this is great for filling in large recessed areas like what you're seeing here on this side of the leg. For smaller panel lines it is a little bit more difficult, I find it can look a little bit dirtier as it's harder to control than your standard fine liner marker, but in the end it turned out pretty cool and a little bit gritty. After that I hit the whole thing with my favorite thing, which is Mr. Super Clear in matte, and that's how we got to this right here. So first off, I will mention this is a relatively inexpensive kit, about $8.50 when it comes to Euro and about $10. Give or take, depending on where you're getting it from. Oh, and speaking of which, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you do want one of your own or multiple of your own, link is down there in the description. But yeah, this kit basically falls into army builder territory, which means it is around the $10 mark. For $100, you can buy 10 of them if you wanted to. So if you've ever built the High Grade Strike Gundam Revive or the High Grade Build Strike Gundam, you're pretty familiar with a lot of this kit already because it is built on that framework. All of the armor, feet, the arms, head, etc. are all new and everything here is perfectly simple. Sure, we do get some seam lines here and there like on the upper section of the shoulder, some nub marks on the darker plastic and I understand it is a bit, well, silly to top coat a kit that you haven't cleaned up but I will admit it's mainly just to stop the glare from the lights more than anything else. But as things go, this is an incredible little kit. The Strike Revive is brilliant, holds up perfectly, and this kit is so well, like I said, perfect in its simplicity. It's beautiful, the silhouette is perfect, and I really have to stop for a second and just say how awesome it is that we do get quite a few grunt kits lately. The Leo from Gundam Wing, hopefully we'll get an Ares. We got the Wyndham and now we've got the Dagger L. If you don't know what the difference between the Dagger L and the Dagger is, I will mention I'm no Gundam Seed expert, but it is the fact that this particular unit right here has a striker pack hole in its back, so we'll talk about that a little later. But once again, it's just so cool that they're releasing grunts. It's nice to build a whole bunch of them. This, as you can see from this particular build up right here, there's not that many parts and the build is quite quick. Like this is half of an A3 mat of parts. So if you do plan to build an army out of these guys, it's not so difficult. Also, Bandai is dropping some premium Bandai exclusive weaponry, which can really spice up your squad. And this is even featured on the front of the box right here. So just look how awesome it is to see a whole bunch of this same grunt mobile suit over and over again. I love it. Grunts, they're the best. 
We also have this absolutely awesome clear section in the front of the face. This part goes all the way from the back head camera to the front head camera to the eye section right there. And you can actually see through this to the layer underneath which is attached to both of those units on either side of the head. So this is a great, yet once again simple, head construction. So now jumping into that full 360 degree spin so you can see absolutely every angle of this for yourself and I have to start off by saying that this is a kit with no stickers so what you see is what you get. Besides the flat top coat and panel lines, this is how the kit looks out of the box. I did also snip the antenna, there's that too. The only color discrepancy I can see on this besides this, the line art which I'm popping up on the side and what I'm seeing in the manual is the weapons inside of the chest, the uh, the uh, Todeshrecken, I'm assuming that's what those are. So yeah, this is an impressive kit, once again based on the Revive, and it feels just as good and looks fantastic. Honestly, grunt kits don't really get much better than this. Simple, poseable, looks like it should, and pure awesome. What else needs to be said? So now moving on to some size comparisons, there it is side by side with the standard size Gundam, which is the Oryx 782 There it is beside Earth 3 Gundam, beside Unicorn Gundam, Side by side with Strike, which it shares a lot of joint parts with. As you can see right here, this does have more of a greenish hue to the white than this does. This is a pure white. The Unicorn is a pure white, so you can kind of see the color difference there. Finally then, there it is beside the last Seed Grunt that came out, which is the High Grade Wyndham. So jumping right on back to the beginning of the video, and once again, this is the standard loadout you usually get with a mobile suit from the Gundam universe, which is beam sabers, a shield, and some kind of beam rifle. So let's check them out. First off, I will mention that these are the only hands we get in here, which are the standard holding hands, and we might as well test these out. What I was going to say is we might as well test them out with the strikes weapons, but there's no point at all because these are literally the exact same hand. Not a similar hand, not a compatible hand, these are the exact same hand of the build strike runner that we get on the ale strike right here. So there's no need to check, they work. Next up then here we've got beam sabers, they attach in in that beam sabery way. And what it says in the instructions about these right here is that the beam sabers are mounted on the upper sections of the left and right waist armor. And they generate beam blades when they are pulled out. The waist armor parts are also equipped with Mark 315 Stiletto Rocket Propelled Anti-Armor Penetrators. And just like the blurb said, when these are not in use you can just pop out the beam and store them on the side skirts securely like this. Next up then here we've got the shield and like I've mentioned earlier on, for a grunt kit the colors in this are fantastic. These are matching the mobile suit as usual. Nothing here is stickers, this is all the color it came out of the box with besides the panel lining. The back is a little bit on the plain side but I think that's passable for a grunt. So as for attaching this shield onto the dagger, this is pretty simple. You need to slide the grey segment here down the back armor of the forearm like so. And then you've got yourself two attachment points, one on the back, one on the side that you can attach the shield onto like that. Simple but effective. Jumping back to the manual and what it says is these shields consist of an armored plate applied with an anti-beam coating. They're important defensive equipment for Dagger L units since they did not adapt phase shift armor. So next up in here we have the rifle. This is made out of three grey sections and we've got that white section then up top for the scope. To attach this it's the usual case of sandwich hands and that means you need to take both hands of the sandwich which are the bread, get the rifle which is the ham, throw it in between the two and close it all up. And that is what it looks like attached. Right on back to the manual now and it says the beam carbine is the main armament used by the Dagger L units. They are smaller than conventional beam rifles and fire weaker beams. However, because their rapid fire abilities are adequate it has led to high operability. They are also easy to handle due to their small size. So when it comes to seed kits besides the design there's one other thing I absolutely love and that is this around here on the back. The ability to use different packs to change the mobile suit's battlefield role. So this right here is exactly the same as what we would see over here on the Strike Gundam and then over here on the High Grade Wyndham. It is used in different parts to the Strike Gundam, it doesn't use that section of the torso and it is different from the Wyndham but it is compatible apparently with the same unit so let's check them out. So what I've got here is the Wyndham's flight unit which is awesome besides those missiles that like to pop off like all of the time, not just some of the time, all of the time. Anyway, there we go. Oh, it's gone again! And I've also got this right here which is the Ale Striker pack from with the Strike Gundam. So let's try them out. So to attach them on you just stick the peg into the hole. Simple as that right there and that fits perfectly. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's give it a spin. So 
So next up then we've got the Wyndham's flight unit. Oh, there goes that missile again. I should probably glue that on to save myself some headaches, but uh, anyway, that just pops on just like so. This definitely fits because it shows it in the manual. Now let's give it another quick spin. So now moving on to the articulation and the build, and I will mention this is as solid as a rock as you'd expect from something that is based on this right here, the Strike Revive and the Build Strike before it. These are solid little kits and they stand the test of time. And that seems to be the case with the dagger right here. Standard polycap neck joint up top, so that's up and down. Side to side is somewhat blocked by that collar, but you'll get pretty much everything that you want. The polycap in the shoulder is aligned to the front, but it does not pop out that far. Just that far and flat, that is it. Combined with that ball joint, that's as far as you can move to the front, there it is to the back, there it is up, and there it is down. Then on top of that we've got that full rotation all the way around, and there's the arm raised all the way up. Full spin punch at the upper arm, very nice. Two point bend at the elbow, which will give you everything that you want and more. And then the wrist is your bog, standard ball joint in a polycap socket. Okay, so until this point, I've done this kit quite the disservice by comparing it to the Strike right here. The Strike itself just has a very basic waist which contains a ball joint polycap, followed by a ball joint polycap, followed by the torso, like so. This is not the case with the dagger whatsoever. So I'm not sure how apparent this will be, but you can't really see into that joint right there. I'll pull up the old schematics. So what we've got is this little rocking mechanism. So it's a peg, a hole, and then two pegs inside of the waist section. Then down below the two parts of the lower waist attach onto that, giving us some forward and back and some rocking, which we're gonna check out right now. So that does mean when it comes to the ab crunch, this thing is rocking a decent one. Not great, but still pretty decent. But where it really kicks ass is this cool little side to side crunch that it's rocking. Look at that. That is nice. So that does make this, objectively, straight away, a superior kit to both the Strike and the Wyndham when it comes to the torso. So if you're making yourself some kind of custom Strike or something like that out of high grades, this is the torso you want to steal. And again, $10 kit. Incredible. Next up, when it comes to the waist, we've got a, uh, well, ball joint that does what a ball joint usually does there. The regular old side skirt with the same polycap, which mainly gives you back to front like so. And then round back, it's just your standard paralyzed butt flap. The waist in here is one of those ones that rocks side to side like so, so down and up like that. There is our kick all the way up to the front, so not too bad. All the way to the back, obviously blocked by that butt flap. And as for the splits, I don't see why it won't be able to pull this off. And there it goes. The only thing getting in the way are the uh, beam sabers, which can be removed. So yeah, can do the splits. Full spin kick then inside of there. If it's in all the way, that lip can block it ever so slightly. This is rocking the strike's knee, so it does have the exact same bend at the knee here, which is nice. Not crazy, but does the job. The thruster in the back of the leg can move down and up like so. And then getting that foot on the ground to test out that ankle. There it is all the way off. Yep, back on there. So yeah, that is all we get to the front. There it is all the way to the back. So not rocking that crazy strike movement to the back there. And finally then there is our side to side pivot, which is not too bad. So the dagger right here is not going to be outposing the destiny anytime soon, but it is so solid and can pull off most poses phenomenally. And I have to say, I am still blown away by that side crunch in the torso. So awesome. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and you know, I'm really debating what tier this should be. And in a way you may not be expecting, I'm considering whether this right here is gold tier or platinum. Honestly, Bandai does pull out the stops when it comes to Gundam Seed kits. They've been hit after hit after hit with all the recent releases. This is kind of like the perfect grunt right here, but at the same time, it's a little bit of a cheat when it comes to a grunt because essentially, it's like the Strike Gundam with a different head and a better torso and not as much going on at the ankles. But honestly, at the $10 mark and the fact that it is pretty much lacking any kind of flaws whatsoever, this is an absolute steal. Like if you take any of the aspects that I 
rank it kit on, if you take its aesthetics, it looks perfect, looks fantastic, has clear pieces in its head, and no color correcting stickers whatsoever. The color scheme is fantastic, the off-white blows my mind, and I love that shade of red and blue. If you move on to the accessories, it pretty much ticks all the boxes and has the ability to be used with any striker pack, at least the ones that I took a look at today, and there is options coming out P Bandai style. And finally, when it comes to the articulation, everything on this is perfect, and it's also added that awesome little side crunch in here. So, what can I say? I'm gonna go for it. Why not? This kit, to me, when it comes to grunts, is probably the best grunt kit I've taken a look at ever. And subjectively, in my opinion, better than the Wyndham. It doesn't have those little rickety ankle armors. It doesn't have the hollow parts in the back of the knees. And it has that rocking new torso. But once again, that is totally a subjective opinion. Anyway, Platinum Tier, I love it. By 20! As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, I cannot end this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video, for dropping a like, subscribing, and of course to each and every one of you that supports me over on the channel memberships or over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Tyler Sanders, The Ambassador for Asymmetric Cats, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T, and Brian Perez.